Your reasons for listening to this show, well, those are your own. But just keep in mind that the views, information, or opinions expressed on the Tuttle Daily Podcast are solely those of the individuals involved and do not necessarily represent those of our sponsors. Yeah, it's called free speech, people. Nobody's forcing you to listen. Get ready for your daily dose of Tuttle. Uh, the all-time greatest uh, intern slash producer we've ever had, of course, Tuttle. Tuttle in Florida. From the Hobo Fish Camp, it's the Tuttle Daily Podcast. No wonder nobody likes you, Tuttle. Everything's a goddamn debate. Hey guys, Tuttle here. Welcome to another edition of the Tuttle Daily Podcast. Hope you guys are having a great day so far. Make sure you check out my website, Tuttle.net. When you go to Tuttle.net, you're going to be able to find every single place you'll be able to find me online. That's including social media, my YouTube, whatever it may be. Now, I had planned on opening up the beginning of the show, talking about the Simone Biles story. And the only reason I wanted to talk about it, because I'm, I'm getting a lot of blowback on social media, and I would go really, really long. And I can't do that, because I've got two great interviews lined up on the show. But the first thing I wanted to get into is, you know, yesterday they had the committee hearing where the four police officers uh, that work for the Capitol, the Capitol police officers, some of the D.C. police officers. I, I'm not exactly sure, uh, but it was four of them. But one of them was Michael Fanon. I don't know. It's F-A-N-O-N-E. And he shared a voicemail that he got while testifying in front of a committee at the Capitol building yesterday. Yeah, this is from Michael Fanon. Metropolitan police officer, you're on trial right now, lying and that. Uh, you want an Emmy, an Oscar? What are you trying to go for here? You're so full of shit, you little faggot fucker. You want to know why this voicemail sounds familiar? Because they sound exactly like the people that I interviewed when I was doing my man on the street stuff, when I went out there to interview the Trump supporters. I thought that the Trump supporters were supposed to be backing the blue. I thought the Trump supporters were LEO, which stands for Law Enforcement Officers. I thought they were all fans of them. Now, I know a lot of conspiracy theory people are going to be like, well, these are all uh, crisis actors. I saw that going around. You know, I, I hate I mean, that is an easy way out because a lot of these people, when they cannot debate or, or dispute or whatever it is or, or debate, Whatever these people are saying, it, it, it's all, oh, they're a crisis actor. Crisis actor. Just like uh, uh, Middleton or whatever, where uh, that uh, Adam Lanza kid went in there and shot up and killed all those elementary school kids. You know, uh, what's his face? Alex Jones, the one that was saying everybody was a crisis actor. Yeah, that is weak sauce all day. You're a little pussy, man. I can slap you up the side of your head with a backhand and knock you out, you little faggot. You're a punk faggot. You're a lying fuck. Let me give you some advice. If you want to recognize when you're talking to somebody that has no idea, is not educated, cannot form a complete sentence, is when they keep using the same word over and over and over again. He's, he's already said pussy, I think, three times. He's, word, he's used the F word for gays like two times. Uh, uh, it, it's just, it's crazy. It, and trust me, it, he repeats it and repeats it and repeats it through this voicemail. And I would love to know how this guy ended up getting this Michael Fanone's uh, phone number. Is this, uh, I mean, you got to understand, I'm sure, and I would not put it past Trump or any of his allies to uh, do a little bit of research because they, they all have connections and they can find out personal phone numbers. But uh, you know what? I, I also, I, you know, look, I, I know that this was being played on CNN. So like I said, I would be a hypocrite and say that you can't believe anything that you hear or see on the 24-hour uh, news cycle like CNN, MSNBC, or Fox News. But I, I just find this a little interesting that somebody was able to get this uh, police officer's phone number and leave him a voicemail while he's testifying in front of a congressional committee. How about all that scummy black fucking scum for two years destroying our cities and burning them and stealing all that 
shit out of the stores and everything. How about that? Assaulting cops and killing people. This is why the, I, I've always called the Trump supporters, and I know that I'm going to get a lot of blowback on this one, but they are the biggest hypocrites in the world. So you're telling me uh, you, you're against what Black Lives Matter and Antifa did, which I do not back at all. But, I mean, there's a few bad apples. But if you look at the video that was showed in front of Congress, you guys had gallows set up and ready to hang people. I didn't see that at any Black Lives Matter uh, movement. I didn't see that at, in, in, at any Antifa things. And, like, back to what I said, I bet you guys wish that you would have, would have been wearing masks because of the pandemic when you were in the Capitol building, but it wouldn't have made any difference. Because as soon as you stepped in the building, they already got your phone number and know who you are. And I think every single one of these people should be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. How about that, you fucker? That was shit on the goddamn Capitol. I wish they would have killed all you scumbags. Because you, you people are scum. They stole the election from Trump and you know that, you scumbag. Oh, I also forgot. Scumbag is the other buzzword that this guy likes to use. I think he's already used it three or four times. It just shows a lack of intelligence on his part. I mean, seriously, like if this was staged, if this was set up, I would make sure that I would get somebody that could talk a little bit better trash. Once again, uh, talking about hypocrites, I thought uh, Trump said, we are a land, we are a country of law and order and to respect the police. You guys were all out, outraged when the Black Lives Matter and the Antifa people were doing it. But when you guys assault, almost kill a couple of police officers, you, uh, you to the point where this immigrant from, I, I think, the Dominican Republic, I forget, I, I know that it's a Caribbean island, but he, he was an immigrant, came here, served in the military, was uh, served during Iraqi freedom, and he didn't get PTSD from that. Guess what he got PTSD from? All of you asshole Trump supporters that, uh, it, and I'm not even going to call it a riot, because I know I called it a riot the other day uh, during the man on the street stuff. No, it is a, it, it's nothing but an insurrection. You guys are nothing but traitors. And you fucking, too bad you didn't beat the shit out of you more. You're a piece of shit. You're a little fag, you fucking scumbag. Anyways, like I said, I wanted to open up the show talking about Simone Biles, but I will do that tomorrow, and I will give you my take. You know, I, I do understand, and I, I, you know, mental health is very, very important, but I kind of am looking into it as a little bit of a cop-out. Because mental illness, mental health, is not something that you develop overnight. And I don't want to go into it anymore, and I will on tomorrow's show, but I want to make sure I have enough time. But I got two great interviews that you're not going to want to miss coming up after the break. You are listening to the Tuttle Daily Podcast. Great news, folks. You now have the chance to see the face in front of that sexy voice. <sighs> Right you are, sir. The Tuttle Daily Podcast streams Monday to Friday on YouTube. Anything can happen at the Hobo Fish Camp. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, sir. That's enough. Okay. So go to youtube.com slash Tuttle. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button so you're notified anytime Tuttle goes live. Good job, sir. Questions? Comments? Concerns? Compliments? Or do you just want to tell Tuttle to fuck off? In any event, contact Tuttle. Tuttle at gmail.com. It's uh, Tuttle with two Ds, dumbass. Welcome back to the Tuttle Daily Podcast. I'm going to nerd out a little bit when it comes to uh, the business, radio, production, voiceover stuff. You know, one of the things that I, that I got uh, just canned for, everybody thought that my voice was horrible. I have one of the most unique radio voices because nobody has an annoying ass voice like I have. Uh, but my next guest, I'm a big fan of his. I found, I found out about him on TikTok is Brady LaRock. Brady, how are you, buddy? I'm doing good, man. How are you? I, I'm doing wonderful, man. I, I got to tell you, I, I am a big fan of your hustle and I want to get into it 
because I, 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 I like to prep for the guests, but the, like, there's not a lot of, you know, bio about you. You're, you're kind of a little okay. bit of a secretive guy, if you know what I'm saying. I guess I, I haven't done too great of a job promoting myself. Well, your TikTok's blowing up, man. I know, right? Uh, so I, I need to, I need to do a little bit better. I need to get uh, like a press consultant or somebody to kind of give me an overhaul on, on what I'm doing to to better promote myself. Now, Brady, before we get into the interview, tell people a little bit about yourself and how they can find out more about you, uh, your TikTok website, whatever it may be. Yeah, so I'm, I, I try to keep it as simple as possible, except for Instagram's the odd man out. Everything I'm at Brady LaRock and BradyLaRock.com on Instagram. For some reason, it's not available, but I, I have to, I had to add a underscore, Brady LaRock underscore. So you can follow me on TikTok. Check out all the work I'm doing there. I think that's the most exciting that's thing. That's your biggest. Yes. That's your biggest one, right? Like, yeah. Uh, now, now, I, I, all right. So you're, you're speaking about all the different names and stuff. I, you know, when I was married, my wife was smart enough, like anytime a new like social media came out, like she would automatically just jump on Tuttle, T-U-D-D-L-E, <laughs> yeah. even my email, like I got on in on Gmail and I was able to get just straight Tuttle at gmail.com. Yeah, see, that's genius. I, I need to be, and now, especially once people... I'm getting a little bit known. I don't, I'm not going to you know, toot my own horn here, but uh, once now that this is happening a little bit, I'm definitely going to have to be on the lookout for when new <laughs> new things happen uh, now, to make Brady, sure that I get it first. Brady, all right. So let, I want to know a little bit about you. You're in Dallas, Texas, correct? That's right. Now, uh, one of the first things I wanted to get into, and and um, uh, one of my favorite ra or movies about radio was Talk Radio. Have you ever seen the movie Talk Radio with Eric Bogosian? Um, I don't think that I have, actually. You really, really need to watch it. It's based in Dallas, but it's about a radio talk show host. Okay. Uh, but, but it was in Denver, Colorado. Uh, he was a Jewish talk show host, okay? Okay. And, and he ended up getting assassinated one night walking out of the station because he was one of those controversial, you know, talk radio type guys. And the, the skinheads, they ended up, they came up and they asked him, they were like, hey, man, can we get an autograph? And they gunned him down, but then they based it in Dallas. So I wasn't for sure that that that, that was one of the first connections. And, and I highly recommend watching it. Uh, it stars Eric Bogosian. Mm -hmm. and, and it's just a great, great film all around if you're a fan of radio. Yeah, absolutely. I'll have to check that out. And as you were telling that story, I, I'm pretty sure I haven't watched it, but someone's either talked about Alan that. Berg was the guy's name. Alan Berg was the host uh, yeah. that the that, that the story was based on. Yeah, so I'm, I'm looking at it now. I did pull it up. It's I've definitely been in radio in Dallas. I've heard this story before. Uh, and been like talking about the movie and whatnot, but I, I've not actually seen it myself. So it's going to go on the list. Now, Brady, how, at what age did you know, like, all right, my, I got a pretty crisp voice. Like, I mean, the, are you a married guy? Because I got to tell you a voice alone, <laughs> like, like I, I could only imagine that the chicks are all over you. Well, I, I have to be honest. I am starting to get a little bit of that on TikTok. Um, I do have a girlfriend. So, oh, you do. Yeah, okay. not married yet. She hasn't put a ring on it yet. So <laughs> she's going to have to watch out uh, if she doesn't soon. <laughs> now, how did you get into now you have I, I noticed because I was on your League 10. We both have worked at uh, iHeartMedia. Well, I, I worked at it when it was still Clear Channel as well, too. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I started. Uh, yeah, I started doing for their I don't know, separate entity that they have total traffic. Um, doing news and traffic on the radio. And I started, uh, yeah, I did that. I think I started there back in 2012. And then shortly after I was hired, that's when they flipped over to, to iHeart and changed a bunch of stuff. And I got out of there after a few years. I, you know, in radio, you kind of bounce around a lot, trying to go up, you know, the next step of the ladder. Uh, and that was kind of one of my stops uh, along the way. Uh, is this something that you, at what age did you know that this is something you wanted to do? Well, so I grew up with, with radio. My dad was in radio for 35 years. No um, kidding. Yeah. Was, so he, I, was he a music DJ or a talk show host or? Yeah. He, I mean, well, he did everything. He did start out as a mu uh, music radio DJ. 
And then he got into uh, some talk radio for a while in one of his stops in El Paso. And then in South, South Texas, um, you know, when I was in late elementary school, going into middle school, he was the host of, uh, of a morning show down there. And then he got into sales and started making some money. And, and then he got off the air for a while and got into sales and sales management at a bunch of radio groups, moved all around the country after that. Um, and yeah, so, but yeah, he's done pretty much everything, but that's, yeah, he did get his start, start on the air music radio back in right around 1980. Now, all right. So at what age did your voice change? Was, was, was puberty like, like, I mean, when you were a kid, did you, I, everybody had a different voice as a kid and stuff, but like, at what age did you like, all right, I got something here. So it's funny because I, I don't know. I never really thought of myself as having any type of voice. So what happened was right out of high school, I started, well, essentially I took a semester of college and didn't like that. So I started working in radio and just a small part-time job. And then my dad started grooming me to be on air and he gave me in a small market. He put me on the air for like a Friday night football show that I was not ready for. And really, I think probably four, three or four years into my radio career is once I started to realize that I can actually do this. And I have uh, started to hone my craft a little bit in, in getting my voice ready to be, to be able to do bigger and better things. But it, it definitely wasn't any time before I was, I was into my career before I knew that I was going to be able to do anything with it. Sounds exactly like me, man. Yeah. I, I, I was in my second semester freshman year at a community college because I wasn't smart enough to go straight to university. So um, one of my favorite radio shows uh, growing up nationally syndicated, the Ron and Ron radio show out of Florida. Mm -hmm. um, they ended up breaking up. And then I found out like two of my favorite characters. They started a show in Volusia County, uh, Daytona Beach. I live in central Florida. And I was like, you know what? I want to go up there. I'm going to get an internship. I had no plans of getting into radio. I just wanted to hang out with two of my favorite radio personalities. Yeah. And, and they, I, I, I fell in love with it, man. But I'm glad that you bring that up because, you know, radio is, it's, I, I almost think it is almost like an athlete. You have to get a certain amount of hours and practice yeah. that confidence because, I got to tell you, I got my first air check when I was on the radio and oh my God, was it horrible? <laughs> yeah, I, I've, I'm thinking about in the near future doing a TikTok, doing like a, how it started versus how it's going and uh -huh. playing, playing one of my first commercials that I recorded. It was like a, a, a local PSA on the station I was on and playing the original and then re-recording it now. And playing what I sound like now because I've listened to it very recently, and it is—it's a wonder that I made it this far in my career. Is—is is that because of technology, though? Because like recording got better, it, it went digital and stuff. Well, I mean, hell, if you started—you said you started in 2012 or like well, that was that time. So that was uh, yeah, that was when I started with Clear Channel. But my first actual job was uh, was in 2009. So not too far before did, then. Did you ever have to work with reel to reel? No, I did not. <laughs> oh, you are very fortunate. Oh yes. my God. Uh it was it was crazy. And like I used to have to remember uh mini disc. Everybody <laughs> thought mini disc was gonna be the next big thing. Yes. That might even have been before your time. Yeah, See? that was. I, that's where I grew up with with my dad being in the business for so long. I remember he would let me in the studio in the booth when when I was a kid. And, you know, kind of let, help let him let me help him do a few things and kind of change out the discs and stuff. And it was it was definitely uh, very different than anything that I've ever had to work with. Thank God. Now, there are a couple of things that I really, really do think that is just genius on your part. The one uh, and and I want to I want to find out why and how you came up with this idea about. Uh, and, and for my audience, if you don't know that Brady uh, will find certain towns, small towns, mom and pop places, not like big, big chain restaurants, and he will record a spot for them. Mm -hmm. And 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 how did you come up with that idea? 
to be honest, I kind of stole the idea in a sense. I don't know oh. who who did this, but it wasn't it wasn't they didn't do a voiceover or do a commercial or anything. I remember on TikTok, uh, it's been a while since I've seen it. So it was a guy randomly on TikTok, and what he did was he, uh, like six months ago, I saw him kind of zoom in, and he's a graphic designer, and he just kind of clicked a random city on the map and just zoomed in on the first business that he saw. He like created a t-shirt for this business. Oh. And I remember seeing that. And then I was sitting there, you know, I guess the first one that I did was probably like two months ago. And I was seeing, I was like, well, what can I do with businesses and try to, I started doing large companies uh, like Pringles and Coca-Cola. And I was like, well, how can I help? Yeah, wait, wait, business? like I, I, I got to stop you there. The Pringles thing. And, and I curse on my show. I think it's absolute <laughs> bullshit in my opinion. Like, did you, did you ever get a like from them, uh, a message saying thank you or anything at all? I, I'm not asking you to bad mouth them, but no. I, I, yeah, so I did, I did not, not, well, they may have liked it and it's, Pretty much impossible for me to know who likes the videos. Well, I had three point two million. I yeah. think I had like three point two million likes. So yeah, so it, that was impossible. But I never saw any type of comment, and they definitely didn't uh, message me in any way uh, at all. So the 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 only thing that they could say is maybe they liked it that I, but I don't think that they did. Uh, they, does, it, does, Pr yeah. does Pringles have a, even a TikTok account? I'm sure they do. Yeah, I would like they do. to see. I would like to see the biggest video. How many likes? they have for the you know their highest liked yeah. video uh and just see because i i almost can guarantee you your 3.2 just blows anything any of the content they put out uh, i would think so but who knows like i i remember seeing them but they are i think i have more followers than them now yeah. um <laughs> but so f them f them <laughs> I and li uh, listen, I I know that you 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 know you don't want to badmouth anybody, but it, I I I admire your hustle because you gotta realize I I started in radio in '98 at the at the end of '98. Okay, and I worked with some pretty big shows, nationally syndicated shows. The, the last big show I worked with, I, I'm sure, I'm almost absolutely sure you've heard of Bubble that Love Spun. Then, right? That sounds uh, familiar. I don't. Uh, know. <laughs> oh, see. <laughs> I got a lot of his listeners that, that followed me over, but I ended up um, was dealing with some mental health issues and, and took time away from radio. Uh, well, I, I technically I got let go and got fired because I burned a lot of bridges. But I mean, that happens in radio. But I was able to, you know, help take care of my parents who were in their 70s during the pandemic and stuff. And I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to start a podcast. And 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 I got to tell you, it was rough sledding for a while because, you know, I was heard from or heard of uh, in front of like a hundred, hundred or so thousand people mm -hmm. a day on a nationally syndicated radio show. And my first show got like 20 downloads. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. oh, my God. But it just kept growing. And then I went on a six month stretch. I consecutive days because I'm a big baseball fan. I thought what Cal Ripken going after Lou Gehrig's record. Uh, I wanted to see how long I could go. I did six months every single day, an hour long podcast. Wow. And that's, that's where it grew. And, that's and that's amazing. why I, admi I admire your hustle. I really, really do. Now, the other thing that I really like, and I want to find out uh, how you came up with this, is the year reviews that you mm -hmm. do. So this was an interesting story. So the first one that I did, which I, I try not to get people to go watch because it's not it's not my best work at all. Um, but how it started was there's a guy, I think his name is uh, on TikTok. His handle is One Ray Music, mm -hmm. um, and he's a guitar player. He has a small following, but he uh, he has this big orange Gretsch guitar that he plays, and he's really good. Uh, so one day, he popped up on my for you page, and he was playing the song Shine. Uh, by Collective Soul. Yes, I know exactly. <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I'm a Gen Xer. Yeah. So I was I was listening to this. And I was like, this is cool. I, I got to do something with this. I can talk over this. I can do something. I'm not sure what it is. So I, I liked it so I could have it saved on my like page for future use. And about two weeks went by and I looked at my like page and I saw it there and I was like, what can I do with this? So I was like, you know what? Let me look up what year this song came out. It came out in 93. And I was like, well, maybe I could talk what about happened? what happened in 93 a little bit. And you know, let's see. And then so I, I did a, a duet with him, with his video. 
And I just started talking about 93. I was like, Bill Clinton was elected president, uh, talking about the Sandlot, the Cowboys won the Super Bowl, um, Jurassic Park came out. Uh, but it was just pictures behind me because when you duet, you can't put video. So it was just green screen pictures. Mm -hmm. And that's how I came up with the idea. But the idea just completely flopped. Nobody, you know, my view, my videos were getting, you know, 50 to 100,000 views on average. That one got maybe 3,000. And so I was like, okay, well, I guess people don't like this very much. And randomly, a week or two later, someone commented and said, hey, do 2004. Oh, like, it snowballed. It yeah. snowballed. Okay. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to do this. Even though no one liked the first one, I'm going to do this. And But instead, I'm going to spice it up, and I'm going to put videos behind me instead of pictures. And I'm going to put the music, and I'm not going to do it anybody. And so I did it. And I posted that 2004 video late at night, and I woke up to, I think, 500,000 views overnight. Woo. Wow. And I was like, okay, well, I guess people like, like this style video now. And just and then, yeah, just snowballing just exploded from there. Well, people love nostalgia, though. Yeah, I mean, they they, they really, really do. Uh, and, and and the great thing now, do you have to worry about? See, I don't know the whole rules when it comes to TikTok about copywritten stuff, some of the videos and everything like do they mm -hmm. are they really tough on that? Because like YouTube, my I, I have over 3000 subscribers on YouTube. I wasn't allowed mm -hmm. to have a YouTube channel when I worked for other radio stations because they wanted the content right. for themselves, you know, so I, I built everything I by word of mouth. Like this is the first time that I've ever built anything social media wise yeah. or online content without having a terrestrial radio station to promote it on. Right. So that's why I did the six months. And, and now I'm over like I average in between a thousand and two thousand downloads a day now. So no, I know that's, that's not awesome. a lot, but I mean, it's still I mean. It's going really, really well now. All right. So you worked in audio. Like, do you uh, do most of your own video editing? Yeah, I do. That is, uh, it's, I, I do. Yes. So I do all the video editing. I do it all myself and I do it on my phone and I've tried to do it on my, my Mac. It, I have Final Cut Pro. Um, I it's too confusing. In. Just, just use straight iMovie. It'd be the best, you know, yeah. just go with the simple thing. Right. And so, well, so what I actually use now is Premiere, uh, Premiere Rush, the uh -huh. Adobe product. That's what I use now. And it's just like really simple. It's easy. Um, but yeah, so I, I do it all from start to finish myself. I write the script, put the videos together, you know, voiceover, mix but it, you know, and do all the editing. So have you, have you seen how radio has evolved though? Because when I first started, it was, you know, all right, uh, we're, we're going to have a station website because back in the day, you never got to see what your favorite radio personality looked like. Right. Then then they went to uh, websites and stuff. And I think that's when a lot of really good radio talent lost their jobs because then they saw, all right, we actually will. Uh, we need to put a good looking woman right. on the show uh, because now it's about video website. And then I actually had to teach myself how to do video editing and stuff. And and then I was the one that that approached the program director. I said, hey, man, these podcast things are becoming pretty big. We need to start putting up the shows, the full shows every single day. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, nobody will like that. But you got to do it on your own. And then that finally blew up. And then they started sponsoring it. So it, it, it's it, it's weird how radio has evolved. Yeah, absolutely. And then. It, it, you, I think you described it so well is that it has evolved, but it's you kind of dying. There's a lot it's of dying on the vine, right? And it's because they they don't uh, they don't want to pay anybody to do everything. They'll say, well, you can, like you said, you can do the podcast of the show and put it up there, but you got to do all that yourself, and I'm not going to pay you any more money or pay you extra to do it. You just got to do it. And so that's the reason why I left the business was just because you know they were like they offered me a job for a, lo a local station in Dallas. And they said, we want you to be, uh, to host a show. We don't know if nights or, or middays, but then in addition to that, you have to work 40 hours a week as a assistant uh, program director. Um, and then, and then, and something with a music director as well, which I don't know what the difference is, but they there give was you another... multiple titles. They, I mean, they do that right. all the time. Right. And then they also want me part of the street team to be going to like every night of the week, going to local yeah, concerts and promoting it. And it's just like, <laughs> I, I'm not going to work 80 hours a week for 
what nope. would essentially be minimum wage at what you're paying me for working 80 hours a week. Exactly. Uh, I just want to have fun and do radio. And then that's, that's the problem with it. All right. So if people right now, my guest is Brady LaRock. Brady, tell people if they would like to hire you because you are a voiceover talent. Yeah. If people want to check any of your stuff out or hire you, uh, how can they do that? The, the easiest way I think would be to go uh, straight to my website, bradylarock.com. Um, there's a little contact form. You just fill it out, send me a message, and then I'll get back to you with, you know, with whatever or if you're needing another site to be trusted with, I'm on, you know, like Upwork, I'm on Fiverr, um, fiverr.com slash B uh, on there. But yeah, website's easy. It's bradylarock.com. And uh, I can do just about everything. The only thing I don't like doing is audiobooks. <laughs> but other than yeah. that, I do it. I actually, every radio host thinks that they need, especially in talk radio, because I worked at the first FM talk radio station in the United States, which was Real Radio 104.1 in Orlando. Okay. Um, and and every radio host thought they needed to write a book or whatever, <laughs> and, and they wanted to do the audio stuff. And man, you know, radio guys are good, but like some of them, they really are not the best at reading stuff. You know? Right. <laughs> you, you, you get what I say? And so now, all right. So speaking of radio guys, everybody, look, Tuttle is a dumb radio name that I was given. Uh, my real name's Patrick, but they, 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 somebody had just stuck with Tuttle and I had it for so long. I was like, now I'm not going to go by Patrick because I've worked so long uh, <laughs> as a dumbass named uh, Tuttle. You're right. Um, is LaRock a real last name? Because if so, that is a badass last name. Thank you. Uh, it is. Re it is my real last name. Wow. So I, I thought it might have been one of those like radio made up like because. You got to admit, LaRock is like a, you know, some guy that would be doing like classic rock, talking up records and stuff. Yeah. And it's funny because my dad, you know, when he started, he started in the late 70s, started getting big in the early 80s. But he, I guess back then was more so using, um, you know, an alias on the air. Uh, and he, he never used his real name, which is Brad LaRock, until... Uh, I don't know, 30 years into his career in the, until the year like 2008. So Brad it's fun. LaRock sounds like a Flintstone character, by the way. <laughs> I, I, not if I'm just saying, yeah. uh, you know, all respect to your dad. I, yeah, but yeah, he never used that. And, and then me, I, I tried to, you know, I can come up with a cool name, but then I was like, you know what? I'm just going to own it. I'm going to use this name. And I, I used my name the, my entire radio career. Is it Brad um, or Brady? Like, because Brady's even more because everybody loves Tom Brady. So Brady that's LaRock, right. that's you know, right. like, yes. Yeah, Brady. Yeah, so that's, uh, yeah, that's that's it. The full, the full real name, nothing fake about it. Brady LaRock. Now, Brady, I, I'll, I'll admit, because I, I'm open and honest with, like, I, I was booked with sponsors and stuff. And, like, I like to break up my segments. And stuff during the show, and and I'm a big fan of yours. I I I think you're a huge talent. If you want to like voice a promo on how people can hire you and stuff, I'll start running it because right now I only got one commercial or paid sponsor. So like you know, I'm looking for elements and stuff like that. So if you want to do a promo promoting yourself and and email it to me, be more than happy to start running that. Okay, absolutely. Yeah, I'd love that. I appreciate that. That'd be uh, that'd be incredible. I'd love to do that. Now, Brady, all right, so, so like, all right, you, you've you gone out on your own. Like, now, is this something now that this is supporting your everyday life now? Because I know that you also are the voice of uh, SMU football, correct? That is correct, yes. So, yeah, doing I do SMU, and then I, I fill in and – PA or events. radio? PA. PA or – okay, all right. Yeah, so I do PA for SMU and, and a bunch of other random events. But SMU football is my gig. Um, so yeah, all that stuff's just kind of side, but you know, voiceover, my voiceover career is, yes, it does, you know, pays the bills and I'm doing this full time and only, only voice work. Um, the only thing, you know, one day, hopefully I'll be able to add, uh, what I'm doing on TikTok to that list of, of what's generating income. But, you know, it's, that's, it's, that's going to take some time. This is all still new and fresh, but I'm just blessed to be able to use my voice and and have that pay the bills and not have to come this being the only thing that I'm doing. And like, like I said, with radio, I'm, I would have to do a lot more than just use my voice, have all those other hats to wear. 
So I'm grateful that this is the only thing that I'm doing right now. It's a lot of fun. It's fun to be your own boss, you yes. know, because you know how many times where like you would have a great ratings book or a ratings period and the program director, no, they won't come down because they expect it. But when you F up, oh, mm -hmm. they're, they're in your ass. So uh, it, it's kind of nice to be your own boss and be able to do everything. Now, SMU, are you, did you grow up, grow up in Texas? Yes. Yeah, I did. Yeah. So I was so born, you, I was born so, in Vegas with where my dad worked in radio, but I, I moved to Texas when I was three. So I've been here my whole life. Football is life in Texas. So like, I mean, where did you grow up a uh, college, high school, uh, professional football fan? Yeah. So, well, college, I, I've always watched college football, but I never really picked a team. I think being in Texas, it's really easy to not like any of the Texas teams because uh, I didn't have really an affiliation. But so just being around all the fans was like, well, I'm just I just dislike everybody here. So uh, I just enjoyed watching college football. But I yeah, I did grow up. I'm actually a huge Vikings fan. My dad. Oh, yeah. My dad is from Minnesota. My whole family's from the Midwest. Um, but he moved around, you know, being in radio so much that, uh, that's, I never got the chance to live there, but I go up there often. I'll be up there in like two months for a game actually. So doing the PA, like I, I've been in front of big audiences, like uh, at big, like stadiums and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and it will, like, if you're not accustomed to it, the delay when it right. comes out of the speakers, like, did that bother you at first? Did you have a problem with that? Because it does, it kind of like slows you down a little bit. Like uh, I, I've always had that, but then I was able to start blocking it out. Yeah, it definitely takes some, luckily I never had it affect me. I think maybe one time it really got me, but I um, luckily knew about that and uh, it did take some time to get used to and kind of blocking it out and, and take some maneuvering kind of just like a, it's some really like a mental game trying to ignore, like listen to yourself talk. You wear headphones? Listen to that. You uh, wear headphones? Yeah. For football, I do. Well, I have, I got a one side. So my left ear, I can hear myself, but that, that way my right ear is open. It says the, the game day director is sitting next to me. Oh, so you have a producer telling yeah. you stuff. Yeah. Okay. I got you. I got yeah. you. Um, now I, I, I know one last question and, and I know my audience, a lot of people, but I just nerding out. So like, what do you edit on? You were, you were talking about Adobe. Mm -hmm. Um, I, you know, like I do my whole entire show on my phone. I record everything on oh, my nice. phone. I, I edit on an app. If you want a really, really good, like editing app for a phone, uh, twisted wave. I highly recommend it. Okay. Because it has a whole dynamic processing on it that you can, you know, kind of rough it in and then and then go from there and stuff. But like, what do you use to edit? Because one of my favorite ones, I know a lot of people are like, oh, Pro Tools, I got to go Pro Tools. <laughs> but Adobe Edition is like by far one of the best that I've ever used with what it gives you and how simple it is. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I use Audition always. Um that's really what I, uh, I used to, I don't know if they still make it, but there used to be what I first started editing on. Cool Edit what, Pro. Cool Edit Pro, yes. Uh, that's exactly right. I, I started on that, you know, in the early 2000s. I, I dabbled in playing music and would kind of, that's where I started getting into editing. And then when I started it in radio, we had that, but also just quickly transitioned into uh audition so i've used that for for forever so that's definitely my go-to i use audition and then for the video stuff for the most part on my phone i use premiere pro okay all right wait pr okay or rush so, premiere rush okay so like what was the first like system you ever edited on though because i remember like it was this very because i told you i worked on work with reel to reel but it, that was like very very brief because i was at the tail end of that mm -hmm. but then we would use this one piece of audio where like you'd have the clip and you'd have to mark it. You'd have to put a marker uh, on the pieces you'd want to keep. And then after you got done with that, like you couldn't cut it out. You had to like go to one end, go to the other, and then keep the pieces you want. And then at the end, you had to export it. And then it would be one complete file. It was just was a big pain in the ass. Yeah. Yeah. Luckily, I when I when I first started, uh, when I was doing my music stuff back in the day, uh, yeah, we had a copy of Cool Edit Pro, and I had this tiny little 
you know, three board or like three switch mixer that I would try to record into. And I couldn't figure it out all the way to where I would have to, we would try to record multiple things at once because editing on that and mixing down, you know, four instruments and making it all sound good. I just couldn't do it. I wasn't skilled enough. And then now in Adobe Audition, I feel like I could do anything. I could <laughs> mix down, uh, you know, a freaking orchestra if I had to. Um, but it still would take a lot of work, but yeah, th that was hard. Cause there's, especially with the, the, the way technology was and doing it, I remember doing it on this huge giant, like compact, um, computer, the, whatever we call whatever we used to call those. I don't know what had the, the tower, the main computers. Oh yeah. 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 You know, just whatever those were that, uh, that we used to use. Um, so yeah, it was definitely, I, f I feel like if I had to edit on something like that now, I would lose my mind with trying to figure <laughs> it out and the, the, the slowness, I would lose my patience very quickly. Well, Brady, I, I want to thank you so much. And, and I'm being dead honest. I look, I, I will say this. Okay. Like I, you want, uh, you want to know the reason why I'm on TikTok Cause I usually will pull content from it, like audio mm -hmm. uh, or funny, like bits or stuff that I can use in like liners and stuff that I yeah. can sample. And, 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 and that's the main reason I was on TikTok. Like I, I just don't have my thing. I have no rhythm. I'm not going to be dancing uh, like <laughs> some of the teenage girls on there yep. or doing stuff like that. Uh, but I, I, I just, you know, like my other social medias, I'd say, what, what do you got on Twitter? Are you even on Twitter? I am. I don't post on there. Like I, I, I get on there occasionally and it's just like, I, I immediately get off. I don't know. I'm, yeah. I used to be really big into it, but I'm not anymore. It used to be the wild, wild west. Like yeah. you could get away with anything, but then they started shadow banning people. But I do got sixteen thousand on Twitter, so I mean that's, I mean that's, I mean that's decent. Yeah. But I mean, like you're blowing up on TikTok though, and I just want to thank you for giving me uh, the time. But I, I am dead serious. I know I'm small potatoes, but if you do want to put together like a promo uh, of how people can, you know, hire you and stuff, I'd love to start running it on the show. Awesome, man. Yeah, definitely appreciate that. I'll definitely put something together and, uh, and send it your way. I look forward to it. All right, Brady, before we go, tell people once again, how they can get a hold of you. Hit me up on all social channels, mainly TikTok. It's the most fun at Brady LaRock and Brady LaRock.com. See, see <laughs> there you had the trick. You see, you had the, you had to bring in the radio announcing voice at the end. <laughs> See, I, I feel real like uh, white trash because I was only able to get Tuttle.net. And I know that the main reason Tuttle.com was yeah, what is that? taken up. Well, I don't even know what Tuttle.com is. Like Tuttle.net is just like a jump page to be able to find all my stuff and everything, you know. Yeah. But somebody said they wanted like 10 grand for Tuttle.com. And I was like, you know what? That's because of me. And they're trying to rape me for it. And guess yeah. what? I will go with a .net. And, and that's, that's how it happened. Well, there you go. At least, <laughs> it's, at least it's unique. Yeah. But yeah, 10 grand is too much. I, I think I paid, I got lucky and uh, paid 20 bucks uh, for my, <laughs> not to rub it in your face, but uh, yeah. I lucked out. Mm, son of a bitch. You, you, <laughs> you, you, I mean, you just got it going on. So uh, Brady, man, I hope you have a great day and I really appreciate your time. Thanks, Tuttle. I enjoyed it. Thanks for having me, man. Wish you could have just flown and had your vehicle arrive a day or two later so you can enjoy more time doing what's important to you? Well, you can. Just give Starfire Transport a call. Let the professionals do the driving while you're flying. Starfire Transport specializes in RV and auto transport. They'll also haul watercraft from boats to PWCs, cargo trailers, and more. Service available throughout the continental United States. So don't wait. Call Brian today at 574-349-4193 or 989-751-6106 for your next move. 10% off for veterans past or present. Also, make sure to tell them Tuttle sent you for an additional discount. That's Starfire Transport. Want to support the show? Go to paypal.me slash Tuttle on the radio. Welcome back to the Tuttle Daily Podcast. Uh, I, I've been looking forward to this interview because this is a guest that I have had on before. And I will say this. You know, it shows me what type of person this guy is. Out of all the guests that I've had on the show, he is the only one that texted me when he heard that my father passed away to check on me and stuff. And it, and it really meant a lot. 
And Bo, uh, I, I got to thank you for that, man. That that really did mean a lot. For sure. For sure. I mean, I appreciate you, Tuttle. And I think that's one kind of lesson I've learned just doing, you know, content or just having any relationship in general. So you never should hesitate to kind of show love or check in with somebody if you're you thinking didn't about have it. to do that, though. Like, <laughs> like, seriously, though, like, I mean, we we just ran. We have not met personally. You yeah. were just a guest on my show. Uh, we text every once in a while. I think we were I was texting one time you were at the Indianapolis 500 at the time. Mm. Yeah, I, I think I, I think I was. And you reached out to me then and we just had a good conversation there. And I just think, you know, if you're thinking about doing it, I saw I saw the message and I, I, I felt compelled to do so. So I just didn't hesitate. I thought, you know what, he's he'll probably appreciate this. And, you know, it makes at the very least, you know, it makes you feel a little better too. that energy you kind of put out in the world's going to come back to you. So. You know, it's good. Some good karma going around. But, but, Bo, see that that's the thing that I like about your content that you're putting out because it's unique. It is compelling. It's entertaining. You guys are actually starting to mix in characters, do mm -hmm. some comedy when it comes to athletics. Because, I mean, if I'm being honest, there are some funny athletes, but for the most part, yeah. athletes are not funny. Uh, <laughs> but. I mean, you guys do a lot of good work, a lot of charity work as well, too. Yeah, I mean, I appreciate it. And I appreciate you, you know, still watching our content and keeping up. I think that's one thing we've kind of realized is we always have been a unique friend group and we've been entertaining. We just got to find a way to put that out in the world in a way that's, you know, easy for other people to understand, but also, you know, stands out in a way. So, you know, a good way for us to do that is, you know, do some entertaining takes on basketball um, in that sense. Because, you know, if we're repeating we're not as good as NBA players, but we're still going to be really entertaining in, in different ways. And we can still, you know, play at a high level, but we can do some other fun stuff, too. Or, you know, you hey, can tune in even if you're not a big basketball fan. Was that you that hit a, a, a game winning shot, a buzzer beater <laughs> recently led, that I saw in one of the videos? So, so that was my brother. That was my brother. Oh, Blake. OK. I passed See, him the ball. <laughs> OK. I, it, it looked like you. I That's why I was a little confused. Now that you yeah. made your brother, I don't feel so bad. <laughs> yeah we get that a lot that we look we look just like i'm a little taller i like to think i'm a little more handsome but we won't tell them that but um yeah we so i that was a for our annual basketball tournament we do every year called the mega bowl we posted that video it's up now um posted about three days ago but yeah so we do that every year it's like the most fun days i have of the year we have basically like eight to ten teams uh this year come to our house, um, have a five on five basketball tournament, refs, everything very legitimate. We had sponsors this year and everything. So it's a big deal for us and for Blake to hit that shot and get a big clip there uh, in, the, in one of the regular se season games. It was it was pretty electric. It, it was a good time for sure. Everybody was going crazy uh, on the you know what? I feel kind of bad. I do this with a lot of people because I meet a lot of people and I keep contact. If I'm being honest. Uh, I have you in my contact list as Bo the guys. I don't <laughs> even know your last name, <laughs> and I yeah. feel bad. No, it's no worries. I don't think I know yours either, but it's Bomarito. So it's B O M M A R I T O Bomarito. Wait, 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 what? What kind of like? Where? Where is that background? Is that is that Italian? <laughs> yeah, it's Italian. I actually just learned like last week. It's like Sicilian specifically. I learned oh. that from just like a random tailor that like said, "Oh, Bomarito, that's Sicilian." I was like, "Oh." That's a fun fact. My dad didn't even, name, didn't even know that. Now, Bo, before we get into the interview and why I wanted to have you on, tell people how they can check out any of the and stuff that you guys put out. Yeah, for sure. So we're, we are the guys. We're on YouTube, but also on TikTok, Twitter, um, Instagram, and I think that's maybe, uh, Twitch as well, but mostly through YouTube stuff. You can check us out. Uh, D A G U Y S on YouTube on Instagram at sub S U B underscore the guys. Um, so anywhere you kind of look up the guys, we'll be on social media. Um, anything kind of helps check us out, share us on social media, all that kind of stuff. You know, we're trying to make the world a better place, try to spread positivity um, and try to encourage people to chase their dreams. I I'm trying to get you down to central Florida, man, because I, I yeah. really think <laughs> that there's something you could do there. Uh, now the reason I wanted to have you on is because of the Olympics. And I wanted to talk about the American Olympic basketball team losing their first game. And, yeah. like, do you think that the 92 Dream Team set the bar too high? Like, I, I don't know how old you are. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm probably sure you were too young uh, during the 92 Olympics when they had the first Dream Team. 
uh, but I'm sure that you've yeah. seen videos, documentaries, and all that stuff on it. Absolutely. Do, do, do you think that original Dream Team just set the bar too high? <laughs> so I have a bunch of opinions on that. First of all, yes, I've watched the 1992 Dream Team, watched that entire documentary. I thought it was amazing. Very fun team to watch, huge fans of them. Um, even bigger fans like the 2008 Redeem Team, too. I think that was a um, an awesome moment in, you know, in history as well and basketball history but um like we spoke about last time i think it's just like the difference in eras and eras are changing and international basketball is just getting more and more competitive so i wouldn't say they set the bar too high i think that was the first time basketball is really recognized on a, a national scale and then that's when that kind of international team started being like okay this is a this is a good sport people can get behind this so i think now it's really just it's getting more competitive nationally i mean yeah well, internationally rather and i think that's, well, that's a good thing i don't think well, people you know, it's, people forget ahead. that that uh, the people the people forget the nba finals mvp is from yeah. greece yeah like, exactly what? i mean there's good players all around the world now so and people you know saying maybe the usa has been slacking i don't think it's really that i think first of all it's not we're not putting the best players out there right now and i think that's probably the biggest problem i have i wish you know, the best players that want to play every year for US, uh, for USA basketball. Um, but still, I think we're the best, most talented team, and I think we still will win gold, and we have probably the best chance to do. I think we're the odds-on favorite. But it's not a bad thing. I mean, and if anything, it adds a little bit more, a little bit more of a storyline and makes people more interested. It's not like, oh, you know, this USA team's easily going to win. Why do I even watch? Like, they're going to win gold no matter what. Now there's a little, you know, tension to it. Um, you know, it's going to be some suspense. Do you think that 92 Dream Team is the greatest, I, I don't even want to say professional, but mm -hmm. the greatest sports team ever of all time across all sports? <laughs> like, uh, I, I mean, you got to look at the talent that was on that team. And you got to look at it. If I, if I were to compare it to the talent around the world right then and how much they were separated from the rest of the world at their sport, absolutely. They're the best team ever assembled. If I were to say, you know, getting into comparisons, like you compare that team in its prime versus, you know, 2018, it's just different eras. So that's why I don't like to, like, you know, compare that. But I would say, yes, like at that time, it was the best team ever assembled. I don't think there'll be ever a team as dominant in their, like, era, just because things are getting more competitive now. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that, their team is amazing. You play college ball and stuff. And, and one of the things, you know, Jordan uh, said this, one of the one of the most intense games he ever played in was a scrimmage game. Did you ever see yeah. the scrimmage game that they did where it was I Mag Magic picked his team, Jordan picked his team, and they basically told the only college player, which was Christian Leitner at the time, yeah. we don't need you, buddy. Just sit down. <laughs> and this, this is the big boys game. Just enjoy the show. Yeah, I watched the documentary that kind of went back and forth on that. And that, ever since then, I've tried to like scour YouTube and, and then the internet to find like the full game and I haven't been able to find it. But I'm going to send mean, you the link. I know where to me. Yeah. <laughs> I know exactly where it is because like it was funny because like all the power forwards were like, all right, I want the ball. I want to guard Carl Malone. And, and then. Yeah. Uh, Mullen, and then and then you had uh, Jordan and Magic, and then and then you had well, Bird was you know like he played a little bit, but he was having a lot of back problems. But he would still sit out at the three point line and and drain them every once mm -hmm. in a while there. But there was a lot of trash talking going on there. Uh, man, I mean that game was awesome. I was yeah. I remember seeing those clips of it and just get getting fired up. And I think those are the best teams. That's when you know, I mean, it's, it's an amazing team. And I've heard those, those stories about like the recent Kentucky teams is like scouts would go watch their practices rather than the games because that's how much more competitive and how much higher level they played at than the rest of their competition. So anytime you got that going, I mean, it's going to be that's going to be crazy. All right. So before we get into the three on three basketball, you know, this is the first Olympic team in quite a while where Coach K is not yeah. in charge. Uh, and I'm not saying anything about uh, uh, Pop. I, Greg Popovich is a hell of yeah. a coach. Mm -hmm. But I think Coach K just knew like how to treat the pros because mm -hmm. there is a big difference going from a college basketball coach to be an NBA coach. Yeah. And that, that kind of speaks to how 
I mean, great of a coach Coach K is, right? I mean, coach, I love Greg Popovich. Probably one of my favorite coaches in the in the world, if not my favorite. Just the best way press he, conference, even off the court. Yes, like his on attitude. The court, off the court. Exactly. So, I mean, that just kind of shows how good of a coach Coach K was, and it shows that you know things are things are hard. It's not as easy as it looks. To just have you know have a talented team, and then you just figure it out. Starting a team with talent. I mean, there's a lot more to that. And I think there was a quote from one international team said. USA is the more talented team, but they can they can be beat. Um, they have more Physically, talented individual players no. that can be beat as a team. Yeah, international basketball is different though. Like it yeah. reminds me of '90s basketball, where it was like if you're going into the paint, you're going to get roughed up a little bit. Exactly. Yeah, it's a very different game. There's a lot of like moving parts and reasons for it. It's not just the we simply have our B team out there. They're not playing at a high level or the coaching. There's, you know, it's a mix of things. And I think refereeing is another thing. And I, that's another thing I'm a little upset about. I don't know why the USA players are surprised they're not getting these calls. I don't, that's my least favorite part about the NBA is this kind of like foul baiting trend where they just kind of, you know, go in the basket to, or drive to draw some fouls. Like just go in there and get a bucket. Um, Dude. You know, stop complaining about the refs. You're not going to get calls, especially when you're not even in your home, home country. Back in the day, they always used to talk about the Michael Jordan rule. Like, Jordan would get the benefit of the doubt on some calls sometimes. Do you, do you think yeah. that really happened or not? I think at any level, um, there's going to be a little bit of superstar treatment. So I would say probably Michael Jordan got some calls, um, but so does LeBron, so does like Kevin Durant, so does everybody at the, at the high level. They get a certain level of calls because – I mean, that's part of the game. They want to see the, the best players perform well, and they want to keep games a little close. There's a little bit of it. You know, it's an entertainment industry. It's not just about the sport itself. You want to, you know, sell tickets. You want to make close games, and you want to make good games. So uh, I think, yeah, people get, you know, he probably got some calls, but so does, you know, so, so do the top players today. So that's not really a reason to separate anybody. All right, so moving on, uh, first time in Olympic history, they're doing three-on-three -three basketball. The uh, women's three-on-three -three Olympic team won gold today. Oh, let's uh, go. Which, which was awesome. Um, and is there a difference between the type of game you're seeing on the college level and the NBA level than what you see with pickup basketball on the local courts or runs? Like, you know, yeah. like, is there a big difference? <laughs> yeah, there's a very big difference. Um, first of all, just like college, NBA levels, that every, everybody's – always playing together um you're playing with the same guys all the time you're practicing you're getting scouted um for every game everybody cares about defense it's a very it's a very different level you pick up you're out there and there, there could be some guys that are really talented they could be more talented than maybe the guys you play at a college yeah. level but it's a different game once you, if those well, pick up guys that are scoring you know 15 a game or, or 20 a game and pick up and get you know things looking really good that they'll go out there in a real court and you know not perform as well well, I, I want to ask you this. So you, I'm sure you've played a lot of pickup games and stuff with what you guys are doing with the content that you guys are putting out. Yeah. It, who is the greatest guy that you're like, all right, he could play in the NBA. Like, because everybody talks about some of the great that never played in the NBA, but were amazing, like, you yeah, know, pickup game players. Like, who is the best you've ever seen personally? Um, so you're talking about, like, recently, like, this, like, you know, this era right now? Yeah. Uh, that's tough. Um, we've played a lot of good guys, especially in the St. Louis area um, in pickup basketball. I don't think there's, like, names that would be nationally recognized. No, I mean, we I, played with Devontae. I, I thought – he, I mean, he can play at a very high level, and I thought he he played in the, the TBT, which is like the basketball tournament for a million dollars on, on a national scale. I thought he should have got more time. I think every time he touched the ball, he he did something good with it. He scored in the last game he played. He, he touched the ball once, hit a three, and then never touched it again. But uh, but yeah, there's some always guy. There's always guys that can play at a high level and pick up basketball. It's just it's just a different game and mentally. Is there too, more swagger? Like is there more swagger when it comes to pickup games? Like people yeah. they like they show out a little bit more. Like when they could just do an easy layup, they they kind of you know <laughs> get a little fancy with it. For sure, especially in the content world or the ball, like you know, with the ball is live mixtapes, those kind of things. Um, 
you're kind of incentivized to do some stuff that's, you know, a little more flashy because, you know, the, the normal layups or the normal wins, you know, aren't going to get you on YouTube or aren't going to get you those clips or are not going to go viral. So there's a little bit more of that for sure. There's a little bit more showboating. But, I mean, that's the difference between us. We know that if if we do that too much and we don't win the game, then we're not going to get on the court. That's the, that's the other element of pickup is that king of the hill or – if you win, you stay on. If you lose, you're probably going to be waiting. Your day, is, your day might be over because how many people are trying to get on the court next. So you got, there's a little bit of that, but at the, same, at the end of the day, you better win that game or else you're not, you're not getting back on and you're, you're done shooting content for the day. So it's a little bit of a battle. Has a game ever gotten too serious? Where I'll like, <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, I know that you guys – yeah. out to have fun and put out great content but uh-huh. sometimes you can you know face a team that maybe is taking it a little too serious and it get, and things get a little heated have Absolutely. you guys ever experienced that 100 percent um and it's gotten even more so with the channel because now people know we're recording they know they're on camera um, and everyone plays with that little chip on their they're shoulder they're trying to so make a name for they're trying to make a name for there's... themselves <laughs> Exactly. It's a little bit of both. So you get some love because like they, you know, they appreciate what you're doing. We're trying to spread positivity, but I'm sure Devontae gets it too. He's got the same thing, like we're spreading positivity. But at the same time, people are like, I'm not going to get on this. I'm not going to get recorded and show myself getting crossed up or getting scored on, you know, live on YouTube in front of all these people. I'm going to go on there, put on a show or, you know, I want to get in your face too. So we don't mind it, honestly, because that makes good content too. I think a lot of, you know, a lot of people feed off the controversy or a lot of views. You get a lot of views off, you know, big, has it ever gotten physical? That kind Has of it ever gotten physical? Too. Um, I wouldn't say there's been like like people put hands yeah. on each other in terms of like an actual fight, but I mean it's got there it gets chippy for sure. There's there's people, you know, doing hard fouls, driving the basket, grabbing you, pulling you, yelling in your face. There's some there's some there's been some good moments we've had for sure. And that's why I like to be mic'd up for the content too, because you can really catch those little digs or things you wouldn't normally, you know, you wouldn't normally hear. In I've the always crowd. wondered how you guys got such great audio. So then you guys are like wearing la- lapel mics or whatever uh, during filming. It's tough. Yeah. I like to wear like a road mic, but we just, it's funny you say that because I played with uh, a ball team ball is life or ball is life formed a squad for this show me games in Missouri. So I played with them and was mic'd up for a game and we had some issues with the mic this time because it sounded like there was like a, a faucet in the background running the whole time. So I've been trying to fix that and trying to figure out how we do it. So yeah, we work, we use, I wear like a mic I wear on person um, for some of the games. So I can just get my like audio personal, like things I'm saying, talking trash, that kind of stuff. Um, but I'm still working on, I'm still perfecting it because we don't know, you know, the best way to do that without catching some background noise or, you know, if somebody hits you, am I going to lose the mic? So it, it, it's definitely a, like a fine line to it. It's tough. Um, I, I know this is a, a random question. What Jason Williams, what, what is your thought on him? White chocolate. He, I'm a big Gators yeah. fan. Um, what, do, what did you think of him? Because, like, uh-huh. he gets a lot of respect. But, like, was he, like, a little too flashy sometimes? But, I mean, he would make amazing-ass passes. Look, I, I love the guy. And if you say – if he wasn't that flashy, would he be, you know, as famous, especially, you know, as a white guy in the bas- in the NBA? <laughs> you don't know. Like, he's, you gotta, he's him, and I love that. He, he was being himself out there. I He was one of the first players I was, like, really playing with when I got into, like, playing NBA 2K or the video game of basketball. So, he was one of the first players I played with him, like, on the Miami Heat with, like, D-Wade and those guys. So, I gotta respect him. Um, I don't have anything negative to say about him. I didn't watch him as much as some other guys. I watched a little more, but I mean, Jason Williams is, he's, he's a legend for sure. All right, Bo, um, man. So the three on three, what is the difference? I, I mean, have you ever done three on three pickup games? Uh, because in yeah. the Olympics, they're playing to 21. Uh, it's not make it, take it. You know, mm-hmm. uh, you, 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 if, if you get a shot, it hits the rim. You got to take it past the three point line. What okay. are the differences between that and like a five on five? When you guys play five on five, do you play half court or you play full court? Typically full court all the time. So that's one okay. difference. Yeah. So what are the differences with three on three? There's a lot. Um, first of all, three on three, I would say there's a more spacing because um, five on five, it's, it's, there's a little more people in your way. There's four extra guys there. Um, with that, though, you get the ball a little bit more because um, there's only three people. <laughs> there's two less people to pass it to 
Um, it slows the games a lot slower. It's only half court. You know, you stop after every possession. So it's it's very much a different game, but at the same time, it it helps you work on your game a lot more because then you're forced to do a little bit more one on one. The strategy own, different new plays. Oh, the strategy is yeah, super because it's a lot more. How am I gonna create a shot for myself right now? Or how? Because you I can't do pick and rolls. Route? Yeah, you can do a pick and roll. I mean, that's about it though. Uh, you know, a five on five is a lot of five people moving at once. Or how do you how do you do this and that? Three on three is more, you know, me against this guy. You got to you got to play better offense. You got to play way better defense. But it's intriguing. I like what they're doing with it. Uh, even like the big three with Ice Cube making that that league too. Or the hook it up competitions they used to do. Yeah, yeah. So I like the movement towards it. It's interesting. Um, I haven't watched the one the Olympics version of. It. I heard the USA didn't even make a team, so I'm not sure who they even entered. Like what what level of basketball they entered? Well, in. the like women, the the, the women. WNBA players won the gold uh, on the three on three today. Um, I think the men are still in it as well, too. Um, but Is it like college guys or like NBA guys? I, I, I mean, there? there are some older guys that are in there. You know, uh, there's only four players on a team. So you only got wow. like one substitute that you can put in. Yeah. Huh. So, so that's that's a little weird. Now, what would you think about horse as a competition in the Olympics? Do you guys ever do like games of horse or pig or whatever, you know, uh, when it comes yeah. to any of the content you guys have done? Uh, I mean, we, we've I don't think we've ever done like an actual video on it. I think my issue is just I think it's not as exciting relative to just playing, you know, straight up five on five basketball or three on three stuff. And just having someone guard you. I think even like the NBA has tried like a horse competition and like the All Star All Star Weekend. It's just not as good. I think people yeah, but, just don't are entertained but, as entertained by it. But everybody loved that that McDonald's commercial with Jordan yeah. and Bird, though. And and I just think that it would be great because some of the shots, like I I was watching an old video and I forget. I know one of the guys. It was Pete Maravich versus somebody else. And mm -hmm. they were playing like a game of horse and it was nationally televised on the wide world of sports. And it was so interesting. Yeah, I, I, that's a good point. Now, one thing I will say there, the intriguing thing about it is versus like a one on one or pick up basketball game. There's a certain element of like anybody could beat you. You could put, you know, LeBron or an NBA player up against, you know, an average Joe. And they, they I mean, they could get beat horse. Like that's a simple enough game where, you know, if anyone's if someone's making shots, he, they could beat, you know, an all time great. So I guess to that point, yes, you know, horse horse could be entertaining, but I just think what, overall compared to like, you know, a five on five or something that there's a lot more action going on. What's your best trick shot? Like if you were playing <laughs> horse and you were going to be like, all right, I got to, I, you got the guy on H O R S and you're like, you want to knock him out and you're going to go for your best like trick shot. What is it? <laughs> Yeah, that's my problem. I'm not great at tricks. I just slowly just get further. I shoot from further and further back, and just like in a regular game. So I probably would just like pull it from half court. I, I'm pretty oh. good at like shooting from behind the basket. I can do that a little bit. Yeah. I got that in my bag, but other people are good at that too. So I just kind of go deeper and deeper. Um, <laughs> I, do, did you did you see the robot that the Japanese oh my God. made that was yeah. hitting the the swishes? Like, I mean, that was a little. I was like. Hell, we need because I'm a magic fan. I was like, hell yeah, we need to use our first draft pick on this robot right away, <laughs> like immediately. No, I agree. He's got he's got some slow form though. He's got to work on it, you know, quickening that release up. But that, I mean, that was cool. That didn't even hit the rim. Uh, <laughs> that's I don't know. I don't know what that was for Japan. It's kind of saying, don't mess with us. We got robots that'll you know make 100 percent of their shots. But hey, that that was that was cool. That was some cool stuff for sure. No, because I was a big fan of the Terminator movies and, you know, everybody's worried about artificial intelligence and stuff. Yeah. And I could see that one day, like uh, the best, like, you know, screw Space Jam. Uh, what <laughs> what are your thoughts on LeBron doing uh, Space oh, yeah. Jam? I'm glad. Like, uh, I, <laughs> here's my thing. I think a lot of people are so quick to judge Space Jam as, as if it was supposed to be this, like, critically acclaimed. Like, oh, it's not. Like, it's not. And it's like it's a fun it's a fun kids movie like and I, if you go in there with that attitude look, I, I loved it i thought i love the looney tunes i think they're hilarious i think all like 
Bugs Bunny's great. I think Wiley Coyote making all those hundred shots was was funny. So I, I don't think LeBron's gonna win an acting award anytime soon. And you know, it was the plot was <laughs> it had some plot holes. But, but Bill Murray though, it. Bill Murray stole the show and yeah. Space Jam, the original one. And I forget who did the the theme song for the original Space Jam. Uh, it was one of those uh, like, uh, 95 South or like, uh, I forget uh, what the hell it was. It was one of those like, you know, poppy hip hop groups back in the day, like two live yeah. crew type thing. Uh, I don't know. I just I kind of feel like LeBron's still living in the shadow of Jordan, though. You know, it's tough to think that way. Um, I enjoyed the movie. I agree. It's not going to be be- as it wasn't as good as the original Space Jam. Um, I think he just got the opportunity to do something like that. And he, he, I mean, I, if I got that opportunity, I wouldn't pot, pass up doing another space jam. So I don't oh, blame him for no. doing it, <laughs> but no. yeah, I guess in that sense, I think people always are quick to compare it, you know, want to make it that I, I just kind of learned to just enjoy, enjoy both of them, enjoy the greatness and enjoy some space jam and, and bugs bunny, you know, dunking on people and doing some crazy stunts. All right. I know this is a debate that happens all the time. Who's better. Who's the go. Jordan or LeBron? So I'm going to admit, I, I'm obviously biased because um, I feel that, that the current era is always going to be the best era, especially with basketball. Are you, People are are getting you better kidding better. me, man? <laughs> I, I was I a horrible admit. basketball player. I, I only played JV. I never played varsity. Yeah. Uh, the, only, the closest I got to varsity was being the towel boy and, and, and being the like equipment manager and stuff. But yeah. I, I just like I know LeBron is a big beast. He's a physical specimen. But like, I don't know if you've seen some of the videos. Uh, do you do you know who Rex Chapman is? Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you put me on him last time, too. And I, yeah, uh, I did. Him. Uh, I mean, mm-hmm. he his his pin tweet on his Twitter is uh, the 90s basketball allowed no baby. Like, you know, because. Uh, yeah. What's his face? <laughs> Chuck, Chuck Daly said, if Jordan's in the paint, he leaves his feet. I want him on his back. I mean, you can say that. You can say there was great defense. And I, I and some, yeah, it was more physical. But sometimes, man, Michael Jordan had Mark Price and John Stockton guarding him. Like, 6'5", dudes, shorter than me. Like, you, so you can say there's some defense. But, I mean, he's got some guys. LeBron's got, you know, six foot. Six six foot nine. Oh, he's a beast. He's a beast. Him, but, he's a beast. He's also he's also got some crazy guys guarding him. That, I mean, I think they would get buckets in in that era, in that older era too. So it's just it's but just you a can't hand era. check. You can't hand check anymore in the NBA. You remember how you used to be able to put your forearm yeah. on the back or what? You can't do that anymore. I mean, there. But uh, my my oh man, I I I completely got lost here. Uh, so <laughs> anyways. Anyway, I'll just no, say, no, 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 no. There's some clips too. Just as many clips as those no babies. A lot of people getting hacked. There's some clips of Michael Jordan walking to the rim and getting an easy layup, but no one looking at him. So it's just you know it's, it's however you want to look at it. Just like LeBron, there's some clips of him flopping, but there's some clips of him doing really cool stuff. It's it's selective, you know. Under you know what confirmation bias, I think is the word. You just kind of see the proof that you believe. Mm-hmm. All right, Bo, what uh, what upcoming events, big events that you guys have got coming up for people to look uh, forward to? Yeah, so we got some cool stuff. We just dropped our Mega Bowl video, which is the annual basketball tournament we host at our house. We're going to drop another big video this Sunday uh, where I played with a Ball is Life team that's forming um, in the Midwest area. So big things happening in St. Louis, but also some big things happening around the world. Um, we're going to do this event coming up um, in August um, with our uh, what they call the Bomberito 500, which is an annual race um, up there in the same series as the Indy 500s. If you're into Indy cars racing at all, um, we're going to do something with them. So be on the um, on the lookout for that. Um, just overall, we got some big things on the way, man. I'm excited. Some big collaborations. What charities? What charities do you guys like? Uh, do yeah. you, I mean, what charities do you guys help out? The most uh, I've worked with is called Familiar Faces, which partners with Every Child's Hope. Um, mm-hmm. just because we know that we know personally the guy, he went to the same high school as I do. So I, I trust them. I know the money's going to the right place. So we've done a food drive with them. We have a video about that, um, last Thanksgiving. And we're actually in the process of doing something, working with my, our local high school this year to try to partner with them, do some service opportunities there, and then run a big food drive around Thanksgiving time and try to blow that up. 
um, around like the St. Louis area. All right, Bo. Well, hey, man, I really appreciate uh, you allowing me some time. I know that we were supposed to record earlier, but I really do appreciate you, uh, you know, being understanding and pushing it back a little bit. So, For sure. And I appreciate you having me on and continuing to reach out, stay in touch. It, it really does mean a lot. I think uh, us, us creators got to stick together and, you know, try to do stuff whenever possible. And I, hopefully we can get out to uh, Central Florida soon. I definitely... That's not off our radar, too. We just Dude, I, will, I have a lot of connections with the local <laughs> news media. So what I'm trying to say is if you're one to yeah. promote it, I can definitely be your guy. Uh, before we go, tell people once again how they can follow you. Yeah, so I appreciate it. Um, you can check us out on the guys. We're on YouTube, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram. So it's D-A-G-U-I-S. Just give us a look. Hey, give us a chance, man. Spread, spread the word, spread the positivity, and uh, share some love. We're encouraging people to uh, chase their dreams, and hopefully we can help inspire you guys as well. All right, Bo. I hope you have a wonderful day, man. I hope all you and your uh, crew are doing well. And uh, if there's anything you ever need, don't hesitate to reach out, okay? Same to you, Tyler. I really appreciate it, man. All right, man. Have a wonderful night. You too. And that's the show for today. Thanks for listening to the Tuttle Daily Podcast. Hey, don't be a dickhead. Do us a favor. Like, share, and subscribe to the show. Also, check out the Tuttle category at 315live.com. The Tuttle Daily Podcast is brought to you by Starfire Transport, stitchyouup.com, and pocketpairclub.com. Special thanks to show producer Vulture and co-host Ciroc. Show voiceover service is brought to you by jcvoiceover.com and The Little Cheese Show. Download and subscribe to The Little Cheese Show everywhere podcasts are found. If you want to help support the show, go to paypal.me slash Tuttle on the radio. You have something you want to say? Tuttle at gmail.com or leave a voicemail at 407-270-3044. To follow all Tuttle social media, go to Tuttle.net. That's Tuttle with two Ds dot net. Thanks again for all your support, and we'll see you tomorrow on the Tuttle Daily Podcast. I get ignorant in normal situations. What? What you mean? What the fuck you mean? What, what are you talking about? Nigga, what the fuck is you talking about? Oh, shit.